Hi everyone, welcome back to Bible on Audio. We are on Leviticus 15. So I hope that you are well and um, I'm gonna open up a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for the viewer that stopped by this page. I pray that this is a blessing for them as it is for me. It's a moment to be with you and a moment to learn, a moment to get closer to you. <clears throat> so I pray that you are in the midst of this as we grow and if they are to part after this viewing i pray that they start a relationship with you on their own may you see be planted and may you bless them in your mighty name we pray amen <clears throat> leviticus 15 the law concerning bodily discharges and the lord spoke to moses and aaron saying speak to the children of israel and say to them when any man has a discharge from his body, his discharge is unclean, and this shall be his uncleanness in regard to his discharge. Whether his body runs with his discharge or his body is stopped up by his discharge, it is uncleanness. Every bed is unclean on which he who has the discharge lies, and everything on which he sits shall be unclean. And whoever touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. He who sits on anything on which he who has the discharge sat shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And he who touches the body of him who has the discharge shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. If he who has the discharge spits on him who is clean, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. <clears throat> I know this topic is, um, I don't know, maybe I'm being true now. I just, uh, maybe this is an awkward topic for some, but I'm going to keep reading, okay? So we are in verse 9. Any saddle on which he who has the discharge rides shall be unclean. Whoever touches anything that was under him shall be unclean until evening. He who carries any of those things shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And whoever the one who has the discharge touches and has not rinsed his hands in water, he shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. The vessel of the earth that he who has the discharge touches shall be broken, and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. And when he who has the discharge is cleansed of his discharge, then he shall count for himself seven days for his cleansing, wash his clothes and bathe his body in running water, then he shall be clean. On the eighth day, he shall take for himself two turtle doves or two young pigeons and come before the Lord to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and give them to the priest. Then the priest shall offer them the one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. So the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord because of his discharge. If any man has an emission of semen, then he shall wash all his body in water and be unclean until evening. And any garment and any leather on which there is semen, it shall be washed with water and be unclean until evening. Also, when a woman lies with a man and there is an omission of semen, they shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. If a woman has a discharge and the discharge from her body is blood, she shall, she shall be set apart seven days and whoever touches her shall be unclean until evening. Everything that she lies on during her impurity shall be unclean. Also, everything that she sits on shall be unclean. Whoever touches her bed shall wash his, wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And whoever touches anything that she sat on shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. If anything is on her bed or anything on which she sits when he touches it, he shall be unclean until evening. And if any, and if any man lies with her at all so that her impurity is on him, he shall be unclean seven days Every bed on which he lies shall be unclean. If a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, other than at the time of her customary impurity, or if it runs beyond her usual time of impurity, all the days of her unclean discharge shall be as the days of her customary impurity. She shall be unclean. Every bed on which she lies, all the days of her discharge shall be to her as the bed of her impurity, and whatever she sits on shall be unclean. As the uncleanness of her impurity, whoever touches those things shall be unclean. He shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. 
But if she is cleansed of her discharge, then she shall count for herself seven days. And after that, she shall be clean. And on the eighth day, she shall take for herself two turtle doves or two young pigeons and bring them to the priest to the door of the tabernacle meeting. Then the priest shall offer the one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. And the priest shall make atonement for her before the Lord for the discharge of her uncleanness. Thus you shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, lest they die in their uncleanness when they defile my tabernacle that is among them. This is the law for one who has discharge and for him who omits semen and is unclean thereby and for who, for her who is indisposed because of her customary impurity and for one who has to discharge either man or woman and for him who lies with her who is unclean. <clears throat> I don't want to, but... I want to. I want to just, um, there was a couple of things I picked up on right here, and especially at the end. So, one thing is, yes, this is uh, redundant. You know, there's a discharge, and then there's a clean, an unclean period, and then there's an, um, a sacrifice so that they are clean. There's a separation. The woman is separated during her time of impurity. And um, they are not, they're both, regardless of what type of discharge, they are both not allowed into their tabernacle. And at the end, when he says the law, <clears throat> when he says, thus you, you shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, lest they die in their uncleanness, why they defile my tabernacle that is among you, among them. So the tabernacle is where they would go to worship and where they would be in the presence of the Lord. And mostly that would be the priest. And so in order to enter there, you had to be sanctified. You had to be clean. So it, he's making very clear in the law that during your time, there is a separation. And so the place is most holy to keep it sacred. And just to be, um, just to be frank, if, if you're unclean, if you're bleeding or you have something going on, they don't want you in the tabernacle. It's supposed to be um, revered. It is holy. It is clean. And so if you do that, it's setting the tone for your habits. You will not defile yourself or um, maybe be disrespectful. You won't uh, go uh, maybe angry into prayer or in the presence of the Lord. That's just what he's saying here. And so um, even though that was something tough to get through, I needed to really look to say, what what is the Lord like really trying to say? And he's setting up customs to become habits to become things that just become second nature so that you know this is god and sure we don't have a tabernacle which personally i think that would have been easier like you tell me where to go and that's where i have to go and be holy and then when i leave i can go run amok i mean <laughs> i think that was a little bit easier and now we're we're um called to live a different type of life one in accordance with his will but anyway i don't want to go off on a tangent but there was actually a lesson there for me and I hope that um maybe you found it too and you agree and if not leave a comment as always take care god bless you bye